Hey everyone, Ryan from Assy Design Works. Uh, this is the first video we're doing from the new shop. Just wanted to kind of start doing some videos where we show off some of the some of the things we've learned over the years. Share them with the maker community and um, other designers. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about laser, a cool little technique that I came across a few years back, and I will post a link in the description to that original video that showed how to bend plastic with a laser cutter without removing it. So as part of the lasering process, we're gonna bend this 90 degrees. A little bit about the laser. This is a 100 watt max CO2 laser. It is a Rudia based system. Those of you who know lasers know what I'm talking about. That's a control hardware and usually we do is RD works, which is a horrible, horrible program if you work with anything better. Um, we actually run ours on Lightburn, Lightburn version 0.916. Uh, shout out to those guys over there, they're fantastic, their software is great. Uh, if you're a company and you're using um, one of these machines for your parts and you haven't bought a license for a light burn, you should. It's, a, it's fantastic. This isn't sponsored or anything. I just, I like good products. So, um, and this can be done with most any laser that has a movable bed uh, or a bed that you can artificially move, like a, a full spectrum where you can remove the whole bottom and then set the machine up on extra legs. Uh, you would have to do that to be able to do this. So what we have here is perplexing and I have it sitting on some scrap two by eight threes and what those are there for is so whenever this gets cut we can allow this to droop so our supports have to be bigger than our largest droop so that's one thing I found with this now this is not not my idea I don't know if I've said that once already uh, but it's a great idea I've been playing with it. I've done a little bit on our old laser. I've done a little bit on our on this laser. And it's a really cool idea. Maybe not ready for production, not at least with a machine that uh, of this power and speed. Probably would want something a lot faster. But there's a lot of things that could be done uh, with this technique if you're a creative enough person. Uh, we'll put a link in the video below for that. Uh, for the original video, you can see all the. All the awesome stuff that they did with it. Before we get into the laser, we have to talk about design when it comes down to how we're planning out cutting, because order of operations means a lot to this process. So you can see here I got Corel Draw up. Um, now the first thing we want to do is we want to we have to cut the whole thing out of the plastic. So you know we have our entire shape here. And then we have a cut line that is separate for our, uh, for our flange with the holes for mounting and a cut line that is for the rest of the side. And then we also have this black bar right here. And that bar is for our software is going to be engraving pass. It's going to be scanning back and forth with the laser. Um, now the, one, the trick to that is that we take it out of focus and we use that engraving pass on a low power to just heat this up in a nice controlled manner. Uh, and that's what's going to let us fold this using gravity on the laser. Very cool stuff. So let's head over to the laser and get to start. Alright, we're in our laser. Now this is going to be a little bit noisy because we do have the fume extractor on, we have the chiller running, we have the laser itself running, so bear with the acoustics please. Alright, so our first step is to cut out our holes and the flange. And in our software we have everything else disabled and we're going to hit start and do that. Pretty run of the mill stuff. This laser could cut a little bit faster, but with acrylics, especially anything that ha could have a surface uh, tension in it from being extruded, 
I tend to run it a little bit warmer and a little bit slower, so it kind of has a chance to hold out and not crack as quickly. Now, this next step, we have to go in here and we're going to turn off our air assist. For those of you who don't know what air assist is, so air assist is whenever you have an air pump, in this case there's an aquarium pond pump that blows air and keeps smoke away from the optics. So for this next step, we have to disable that, also cool off what we're trying to do down here. Turn off our air, remember, if you turn off the air, you've got to turn it back on later, unless your machine has automatic air, which this one does not have that fit yet. So our next step is we're going to drop our bed 12 millimeter. That's what I find works good for the settings we have. So we go down in Z, 12 millimeters. This machine also has its automatic focus disabled. I'd like to be able to adjust it myself. Um, but I don't find that automatically having the bed height adjusted does much more than crash the head into the bed more often than not. Uh, especially if you don't have a fixture in the machine. All right, so our next step is to come down. We're going to enable our raster slash fill. And for that one, we're set at 465 millimeters a second. And for this pass, I'm doing, um, we're going to call it, I think eight passes is going to be enough for the geometry we have here. Probably more than it's needed. We're going to have to. Uh, most likely have to stop this process in the middle. But we're gonna go with a uh, yeah, 465 millimeters per second, 30% um, power, so 30 watts. And again, we're out of focus 15 or 12 millimeters. And you're gonna notice I'm gonna go back to where in inches of millimeters a lot. Welcome to America. <laughs> Okay, so we have uh, this one ready to go. Now this is where the fun stuff happens. So we're gonna hit start. And you can see it's just heating up. It's actually getting through that layer of plastic that you can see, uh, the protective layer. And we're gonna keep an eye on it. And you can see it raised up a tiny bit. Now it is starting to drop. Now, we're, yeah, like I said, we're running this eight passes. And you can see it's already starting to drop. And since we're putting a very precise heat right up in here, it's only bending along that spot. Not very fast, but in the time it would take for me to turn on a bender, heat it up, I don't know, might be about even. And I see a little bit of smoke coming off air. Uh, it does, you'll have to play with the settings on your laser, but you can tell it's it's dropping. We're at about 45 degrees right now. And if I have to, which I did before on the last one, uh, I might hit the start button again and just have it run it again. But it doesn't look like we're going to have to do that. It looks like a couple passes with this at 30% power is really what it wants. Once we are drooped fully, I'm going to cancel that pass. Okay. All right. Take turn our air assist back on. And then we bring our laser back up. Our laser table back up. We enable our final cut. Our air assist kicks on. You can see it blowing the smoke everywhere. Now, having it on the two by fours is not ideal. But we're just going for proof of concept. And I wanted to kind of show that proof of concept because this technique doesn't, uh, I don't think it gets explored a lot. And it's always good to explore new techniques with the tools. 
a good idea to explore new techniques with any tool you have. Um, because you never know what you might learn. And what we have here, this is a bit more uh, melty. I don't think this is the same kind of plastic we did on the last one, but we still have a good bit of space here. There's enough of a bond. For this application, the sign on the wall, this is gonna be fine. And if you're really worried about it, you could always take and we're gonna beat a silicone or something in, inside. Again, this is going up on a wall in the garage. It's gonna to point to where the fire extinguisher is. No big deal. And we take and pull the plastic, get that feel. And if we did it right, the inside plastic comes off in one go. So yeah, that, that inside corner, not the prettiest, functional, but not pretty. Again, your mileage is gonna vary, and I would encourage you to, if you have a laser, or you have access to a laser in a maker space, um, and the time to be able to do it, play around with it. Try new techniques, try new materials. Of course, laser safety as always, you make sure your materials are laser safe. Experiment, tinker, all the good stuff. So I'm gonna take this over to our spray booth, hit this with some fixative primer, um, and then print another sign. And we'll just put a couple screws in it and hang it up. Not bad for a couple minutes work. Again, as these design works, teamadw.com, check out all of our Jeep stuff, uh, all of our other vehicle accessories, and soon our prototyping services for other companies if you're interested in having parts made here in the United States and having prototypes made, badges, um, various accessories, contact us. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.